Welcome to Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater. Now, here's your host, Lisa Condit. Thank you for joining us. It is so exciting to be here with one of my favorite people involved with the theater, and he's my one of my favorites for several reasons. Don Phipps, welcome to our program. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. You have been with us many times before, and do you want to tell people a little bit about who haven't heard you before, how you got involved with the theater? Because when you hear about this, ladies and gentlemen, you'll understand why he is throwing his 85th birthday concert for all of you to come to. Well, 65 years ago through I don't know what perverse method of fate, I became interested in theater pipe organs. And over that period of time, I collected a uh, large number of parts, probably in the equivalent of about two tractor trailer loads. And uh, over this lifespan, having bought my first uh, theater organ at 17, I did assemble uh, a couple instruments, but then, uh, you know, getting involved with marriage, family, kids, and so on, uh, I sort of uh, put the hobby aside until I retired, uh, fortunately, at the age of 56. Well, at that point, uh, I suddenly discovered that I had nothing to do, and uh, (laughs) I... uh, figured uh, some way of avoiding depression uh, was to either see a psychiatrist and uh, give him a lot of money or restart my hobby of many years previous, namely building theater pipe organs. Well, that uh, proved to be a good choice. And uh, after six and a half years of labor and uh, about 10,000 hours total time and more money than I even want to admit, (laughs) I managed to assemble what was then the largest theater pipe organ ever in New England. Well, that's fine, but like the person that has the 3,000-pound elephant, uh, having the pet isn't the problem. Finding a place to put it is the problem. And fortunately, um, after several uh, unsuccessful attempts of finding a home for the instrument, I was very lucky to meet up with Troy Seabells, who at that point was starting the real forward motion on the Hanover Theater in Worcester. Well, one thing led to another. Troy was wonderful. He had the vision. And so now, uh, at this point, we're uh, uh, approaching the ninth year of the organ being installed in the theater and having been used in many uh, facets of the theater's uh, production. It's been an incredible journey for sure. And you know what, just listening to you talk about that reminds me of before we were even open when we were talking about the organ, when people thought that the founders were crazy and they really weren't sure that the Hanover Theater was going to happen. But meanwhile, behind the scenes, there's all that positive energy and collaboration. And think about it, New England's largest theater pipe organ. You met Troy. How did you How did you end up coming into contact with Troy? Well, I had been aware of the fact that the theater uh, was uh, trying to become established. Uh, friends uh, sent me uh, newspaper clippings from the Worcester area, and I was aware of the project, but uh, for a number of years, it didn't seem like it was moving uh, in much of a positive direction. Then suddenly uh, I heard about Troy and the fact that he had infused a lot of new blood, new spirit, new energy into the project. So one day I made a cold call. I called up Troy and I said, uh, Hi, uh, I'm Don Phipps and maybe we should get together. My understanding is that you have a theater and I have a theater pipe organ. Well, I thought the greatest uh, possibility was that Troy would would laugh at me, but uh, that wasn't the case. Uh, Two weeks later, I received a uh, very thick envelope with the preliminary plans of the theater, and uh, the rest was history. There was a lot of challenges along the way, but and if it hadn't been for Troy, I'm sure the project never would have come to completion. You know, that is a wonderful thing about Troy is he is a visionary and he is so good at being able to take an exciting concept like that and being able to integrate it and be flexible right as things are being built. Because do you remember what month or what year that was when you first came into contact with Troy about the possible location of the organ? 
Well, it was about, I think, a year and a half uh, before the theater uh, actually opened. Uh, we started working uh, in earnest about six months before the doors opened, uh, and the work was so extensive, and uh, due to financial limitations, it was basically done by a crew of four faithful uh, full-time workers and then about another half a dozen assistants. And uh, all in all, we figured on-site in the theater, we put in 1,500 man days of work. Absolutely. And that's when I first met you, Don. That's when I became aware of this thing called an organ lift. Now, it wasn't in the original plans. So I remember the conversations in the office about how we needed to make these adjustments. And there were some challenges, but the perseverance definitely helped that project come to fruition. But we never in a million years would have been able to have this beautiful instrument in our theater if it weren't for you and your team. How did you collect this group of volunteers that still to this day is so dedicated to the organ because it's a, it's an amazing instrument that requires a lot of tuning and maintenance, right? Well, this is true. And uh, everyone involved, um, particularly the people that uh, uh, consistently work on it, have been people that have been uh, organ nuts, for want of a better word, uh, probably most of their lives. Uh, uh, people like uh, Bruce Hager and Len Beiersdorfer, our talented house organist, and my brother John and myself, and then other people that uh, gave of their time when we required their talents or they had the time available to help things along. And you know what? That was the spirit that was in the building before opening night, wasn't it? Every single person that was just bustling to make incredible mountains move before we opened. And I'll never forget that first year with A Christmas Carol, because I'm sure part of the attraction for ha housing this instrument must have been the vision of how the instrument could be incorporated into each performance, and especially A Christmas Carol. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, the first year's production of A Christmas Carol, we hadn't completed enough of the organ to have it usable, and so uh, the, uh, the musical director uh, uh, accompanied it with a keyboard. Uh, the next year, we had about uh, two-thirds of the organ playing, and it was used for the production. And then the following year, it was completed uh, to give you uh, some idea, I know last year um, there were 20,744 paid admissions. Wow. And so just to expose that number of people, even though they might not be organ nuts or even know what a theater organ was, to expose that number of people to an instrument that is one of the two instruments which is indigenous to the American culture. Uh, is a, a privilege that we really welcome. Absolutely. There is so much to talk about with the organ, and it's such an interesting subject, and the sounds that can come out are incredible. So everybody, I want you to stay tuned. We'll be back after this quick break here on WCRN AM 830. 